For hundreds of years, the Netherlands has been the shipbuilding capital of the world. And every memorable ship starts with a great design. Demand for a new generation of vessels is driving Dutch boat design into uncharted waters. How can a centuries-old tradition of maritime craftsmanship adapt visionary technology to deliver the dreams of the planet's most extravagant billionaires? So will they, they will have to repaint the complete yacht again. And how do years of hard work pay off on open waters? Have you seen the smoke? What the heck is that? I don't know. It's uh, some kind of exhaust. This is Super Yachts. The city of Snake boasts 130 water sports centers and 13 marinas, making it one of the most vibrant maritime cities in the northern half of the Netherlands. Little wonder a yacht design and construction company should feel right at home in this nautical environment. I've always done, uh, done yachting from small, uh, uh, starting with sailing, uh, sailing boats and then uh, going to the university, learning more about the, the mathematics be, uh, behind it. So I think it was bound to happen to uh, end up in such a dream job. My passion with boats started when I was a very, very small boy. Boating is fun. Boating is fun. And why is boating fun? Because it has everything. It has a technical aspect, a design aspect, and it has a fun aspect. The company pursues a one-stop shop approach. Everything is designed and engineered in the same place. So it's not only, only the picture you see when you first see the boat on the water, uh, it's also definitely on the, on the systems, on the engine room. So design is, is vital and it, it all starts with, uh, with design. Whatever area of yacht design you can think of, it's covered. The departments of design and style, naval architecture and small and large craft engineering all collaborate on the final concept. If you have a yard of uh, 40 meters and, and we use all our divisions to, uh, to work on this, uh, on this boat, we get a team of roughly 25 to 30 people working on such a project. At this moment, Joost is, uh, is finishing up one of our latest uh, concepts. We'll have an uh, all-transparent beach at the, at the aft with a gym. Designing a yacht is a process which involves constant adaptation. Even during production, a design is subject to change. The team's latest project is an ambitious design based in China. Once finished, Super Yacht Star will be 42 meters long and 8.4 meters wide. But even more challenging than its design is the Dutch-Chinese alliance. It takes special skills to build a ship thousands of miles away from the home base and coach a team with completely different cultural conventions. We ended up here because um one of the designs which we made uh, about uh, five years ago. The owner, wh who is a Dutch uh, owner, was quite keen on uh, getting Dutch engineering, Dutch team, uh, even Dutch metal, all Dutch components, and then bring that to China to prove that assembling such a yard with the quality of the Chinese workmanship is feasible. Well, I'm going to China to perform one of the last inspections before the boat can, uh, can hit the water. So we have to check uh, uh, certain elements of, 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 uh, of connections within the hull, uh, the water tightness of doors, uh, if the engine room is, is ready, all these elements. You can uh, put it on the computer or sketch it out as many times as you want, uh, but when you can touch it and feel it and, 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 and get the emotions we have in, in the product, it's, it's unique, nothing like it. Marnix, or a member of his team, travels to China every six weeks to monitor this build. Every detail, however small, has to be checked. I'm well, looking at the connection of the stainless steel to the metal, the normal steel. As this is uh, two ways of uh, two different types of steel, 
We don't want uh, the connection to be imperfect where some corrosion can start between the plates and this anchor pocket which will hold the ship when she's uh, laying at anchor uh, comes off. But this is uh, this looking uh, very very nice. Checking up opposite to the light, how the, the hull is fared and how the paint job reflects on that. And I'm quite, quite, quite pleased with what I see today. The Chinese team has worked hard to meet the high standards of the owner on both the exterior and the interior of the ship. The difficult part for you is there's no decoration yet. Yeah. So you see everything. Reflected as a piece of artwork, I make all my attention yeah. over there. It's correct. So it's, it's, a, it's an extremely tough inspection for, uh, yeah. uh, for you. but. Uh, that's, that's, that's where you are right now. The specific challenging part of the, of the design of this boat was primarily the interior, because there's no uses of wood. It's all painted interior, which is, uh, which is quite hard. You would, you would think it's easier to paint something rather than to, to use wood, but it's absolutely unforgiven. Everything you will see on that little flat uh, surface. Uh, that's also why we opted for having the interior produced at the same time as the metal parts outside of the boat in a special factory so they could build parallel so the, the tracks weren't uh, uh, in length of each other but were parallel to, uh, to each other. The design process for Star started five years ago and production has already taken four years. The super yacht is due to be delivered in just a few months but it's still a work in progress. During Monix's last visit, the window frames in the wheelhouse were a point of concern. They were much broader than the designers intended them to be. So now Monix needs to inspect the improvements. You see what a difference it makes that we, that we narrow the frames? No, I didn't went over the frame. Actually, at the time, I don't know what the discussion about. Then in the end, the, the, the frame is smaller. And you see here, the vision is much better. Yeah, it's much, it's, much better. It's much better. Much better. Much better. So during the last visit, yeah. we uh, found out that uh, actually the, I would say the, the covering of these parts of the windows was a little bit wider than, uh, than, uh, than, than we agreed. So when the captain would look far away, he would have a big blind spot in, uh, in the boat. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we agreed that they would take out these pieces, so all the pieces were taken out again and he had to redo everything. Yeah. But uh, now, uh, now you can see it, it's, yeah. uh, it's much better. And this is purely a safety item. It's uh, very, uh, very important for uh, the use of the boat. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Cool. Did, you, did you finally have enough uh, leather? Just enough. <laughs> I told you, I told you. <laughs> we don't even have one piece more. Good, good, like good, good. Size, no. no. <laughs> it's too expensive to have too much waste. Yeah. I would say we're Dutch guys, so we try to uh, mingle with everybody across the globe. But for sure you have uh, cultures everywhere where you need to cooperate very thoroughly and need to listen very carefully what they say and interpret their, uh, their uh, mimics as uh, the Chinese are very polite people and they don't like to, uh, to uh, have loss of face or be impolite. So uh, as in a Dutch shipyard somebody would simply say no, we can't do that. Um, here they simply will say yes, but the ultimate result will be no. And it's very important that we uh, realize that already in the beginning of the design process actually, to, to emphasize on that and on our cooperation. But I would say overall, um, it might take a little bit more time, but, uh, but uh, they do a quite job. Coming up, with only a few weeks until test day, it's all hands on deck as the team race to prepare staff for the rigorous demands of both the water and the owner. Oh, the front of the bow is not half bad as well. I've <laughs> seen the starboard side of the bow and lower it, which is not okay. But it's far from plain sailing. We have a couple of major items. Uh, one is the folding door. It's a hazard at, the, at this uh, point. founded by 73-year-old yacht designer Dick Bow. He is a true sailing fanatic who has enjoyed drawing boats since he was a child. Dick's talent helped put the Netherlands on the map in the world of super yacht construction. 
toen ik begon in Friesland was ik de eerste ontwerper. Met andere woorden, men stond uh, heel verbaasd naar mij te kijken als ik zei wat zo'n tekening ging kosten. Want ze dachten dat ze voor papier niet hoefden te betalen. Nou ja, dat is dus wel veranderd. Dus ik kon ook mijn uh, vak niet leren bij een ander ontwerper, wat nu dus wel gebruikelijk is. Maar dat was bij mij dus niet mogelijk. Ik moest het allemaal zelf leren en ervaren en schaden en schanden. Dick's vision inspired many famous designs still popular today, including the Q52 and the Doggersbank series. Ja, een typische serie is de Doggersbank. Daar ben ik in 1968 mee begonnen. We hebben altijd gestreefd naar bijvoorbeeld de, de onderwaterschepen zo te maken dat het met veel minder energie dezelfde snelheid behaald kan worden. Of het een schip zeg maar 100 liter gebruikt per uur of 80 liter, dat maakt over een jaar een heleboel uit. Nou, wij proberen dus onder die 80 liter te blijven, om een voorbeeld te noemen. But whatever the views of the artist, in yacht design it's the client who is always king, however impractical his demands may seem. In Drachten, the Netherlands, the team is hoping to sign off work on the Ned 70. Its owner, Bart Velema, had very particular requirements. He wanted a seaworthy yacht that could cope with a low tide. So the draft, the distance from the waterline to the bottom of the ship, could not be too deep for shallow waters, but still offer enough stability to sail the rougher oceans. All this within a modest 2 million euro budget. Now he's able to see the finished yacht for the first time. Three years hard working, we have a yacht. So everything comes together in this moment. The collaboration started in 2008, and Bart Velemar knew from the start exactly what he wanted in a boat. I'm looking for a, for a motor yacht, a motor yacht that can bring uh, me and my family everywhere in a comfortable uh, and safe way. Well, he basically asked for a Mission Impossible. So he wants to have a boat which is self-riding, but then again, also not so much volume. Uh, he wants to have uh, ultra fuel efficiency and high speed, but a very small engine. Some, some contradictions there. I want to travel where I want and in a comfortable way. And we want to, uh, we want to visit uh, shores. So I want the boat to, to have not more than 100 centimeters of draft. That is unique. And now, after four grueling years, the time has finally come for the yacht to be launched. It's an incredibly tense moment for all the team. Yeah. Yeah. Is he mooi or is he mooi? The form is echt is is optimaal. Nou, eigenlijk niet sterk. Nu kijk hoe mooi dat hoe mooi dat dakje nog weer omhoog loopt daarachter. Dat is toch echt schitterend. The name is uh, the name of my wife. She will baptize uh, the ship and I gave it her name. We are very, very excited with the project and we're also very proud that the owner chose to go for this concept, to go, for, to go in this totally different direction. We are very curious what the, what, uh, what the future will bring and what the market will think about this, uh, this project. I would say, Marie, he goes in the water. Come on. Zakken met die handen. It's great to see the boat in the water now. It's absolutely fantastic. It really years of hard work and drawing. Finally it turns out it all looks very good. Dealing directly with a demanding Dutch client is hard enough. But working in an unfamiliar culture on the other side of the planet is the ultimate challenge. Marnix has traveled to China to inspect Star. The slightest imperfection could jeopardize the delicate relationship with the client's representative. So he's running a final check throughout the ship. 
marking all areas that need more work. During this visit, I also check the interior, uh, uh, whether there are dents or, or, or parts of the interior uh, dented by, by workers while they were working on the boat, or just the finishing of the, uh, the paint is not good enough, whether it's, it's too glossy or too matte. Uh, so what we use is just uh, sticky tape, uh, put it on the boat everywhere. The, the quality should be raised to get the normal level. So the same goes for the for the ceiling panels. He's yeah. quite yeah. meticulous in that. Yeah. All the lines yeah. to go straight. Yeah. When the deadline is coming closer and closer, you can feel everybody's becoming just very, very nervous. Uh, already weeks before, we, we got a tremendous amount of extra calls, emails, uh, internet conferences to make sure everything is ready. Uh, especially since the owner's representative is coming tomorrow as well. Everybody's very nervous what he thinks of the boat. Uh, so you can see them working literally all through the night and already early in the, in the morning. A vast part of the night is being used to check all measurements one last time. Do they meet all the technical requirements? The glass is already on the required height from yes. classification, so you cannot fall in. So that glass will be about... Uh, I think 650, after, 700? I think complete the whole thing probably in 800, 900, including the handrail. Even? Yeah, yeah. including the handrail. Yeah. yeah, okay. So this is this is a, a stainless steel? Yeah. This piece is 20 millimeter yeah. stainless steel? Yeah. Also tube? Yeah. Both tube, is tube? Tube, tube, yeah. And this is fixed profile maybe? Fixed. or. or I, I would say, regardless where you are in the world, you work uh, as long as you're awake. So, uh, because they have many questions, I'm, I'm obviously here for a couple of days, or other people of the team, they come a couple of days, and they need a lot of input on these little details which, which we didn't engineer uh, at, the, uh, at the office. So, uh, many questions asked always, and sometimes even at, during dinner, you think you're relaxed, and, uh, and all of a sudden the question pops up, and uh, we just do a quick hand sketch, and it's done. It seems the shipyard workers will have to labor through the night. The owner's representative is due to visit tomorrow for a major assessment. Any faults will result in costly delays. The owner is adamant that he wants to be sailing the yacht in just three months' time. The role of the owner's representative is very uh, important. He ultimately gives the, uh, the verbal expression if the owner approves or not by, uh, by him. So he plays a vital role in this. When the owner's representative arrives, he spots a problem with the paintwork. The three layers of primer, six layers of putty, six layers of epoxy, and nine layers of paint put on the hull have not produced a finish he's happy with. And there's more bad news. Cracks are discovered in the facade door. Besides a lot of small items, uh, we have, I would say, a couple of major items. Uh, one, obviously, is the, is the folding door. Uh, that definitely needs to be uh, fixed. It's a, it's a hazard at, the, at this uh, point. Uh, the other major uh, part is that um, the paint of the hull wasn't approved yet. The nine layers of paint applied to achieve the correct thickness and quality for a yacht like this have an inconsistent color finish. So temperature was okay, there was no problem there. Mm -hmm. So we said there are two things that uh, rest. Yeah. One is uh, surface preparation. And the other one is uh, the gun settings for the spray. Mm. Mm -hmm. you can pump up. Marnix's Chinese colleague defends the work of his men. This is one of those moments where intercultural diplomacy is needed, so no one feels offended or will be blamed for the flaws in the paint job. But in the end, all the layers of paint will have to be done all over again. But I would say it would have been the same painter as, uh, as the rest of the job, because some parts of the hull are, uh, are not half that bad. and they're, they're quite different compared to this to this side. So it's good to see on other areas that you can see they can do it. That's well, not the question. In the superstructure we had some defaults, but they were oh, minor. You know, decent, were nothing. Decent. It was just uh, minimal. Oh, well, the front of the bow is not half bad as well. I haven't seen that part yet. <laughs> I've seen the starboard side of the bow and lower end, which is not okay. But no, the lower end right, is good. We, uh, let's continue and uh, let's continue uh, our uh, uh, draw our conclusions after yeah. that. <laughs> that's yeah. true, that's true. They worked hard on getting it ready before the owner's rep came, uh, maybe a little bit too hard, uh, so there was uh, yeah, not enough gloss uh, on the whole boat, uh, so will they, they will have to repaint the complete yacht again. Coming up, new techniques enable a yacht to be built in just nine months. Parts can be cut on uh, maximum 
0.1 mil accuracy. And the Chinese team prepares for the Star Sea trial. The starboard uh, engine wasn't firing up. Super yacht has its own specific requirements that influence the way it's built. In the Netherlands, Bart Bauhaus pays a visit to the shipyard where an unusual production method is used to build a yacht for an Italian client. We're going to the building location of the Gamma 20. The Gamma 20 is a second boat we are building for this uh, for this owner. Um, very dedicated yachtsman with with a lot of experience and uh, high challenge project. Because we have to deliver the boat in a very short time. Um, we are reducing the build time from 13 to 9 months. The ship is built with the smart kit system. All parts are manufactured off-site and then delivered to the shipyard. Normally the yard has to customize the different segments of a ship. With this system the parts only have to be assembled, speeding up the entire process. Here we see the Gamma 20, steel hull, aluminum superstructure, built with the smart kit system. Big advantage, uh, quicker building time, uh, less paint, less filler works required. You see a very, very smooth surface, has no filler. Another advantage of the smart kit system, you build more accurate. This method is more environmentally friendly than conventional construction methods. State-of-the-art computer software is employed to create less waste while cutting the aluminium plates that will form the ship's hull. I'm preparing a nesting that's uh, where all the parts are put in one plate and the file will be sent to the cutting company. In the cutting room, an advanced laser slices the steel plates to the right sizes. Here we are cutting an 8 mm aluminium sheet. You can hardly see the beam where the machine is cutting with, and that's uh, mainly the reason why the machine has such high accuracy. An other advantage of laser cutting with such small laser beam is that you bring in very less heatness, so parts hardly deform during cutting. Parts can be cut on uh, maximum 0.1 mil accuracy. Once everything is cut, the pieces will have to be shaped. The next step is to build a ship from all the separate segments. The parts are going to the location where they're going to assemble the, the, the boat. Uh, the parts are pre-numbered, are pre-selected, um, so everything is ready for uh, assembly. So basically you can start on with building right away with the right part in the right flow. Normally, we would uh, basically dump all the parts here. In this new system, we, we pre-sort all the parts in, a, in certain cradles, with, with, which, has a, which have a dedicated number. You see here, this is, this is bended, so it's uh, ready to, uh, to fit and uh, plug and play. Basically, that's it. The plates are being deformed, so they, they fit to the shape, is, is added to the, to, to the structure, it gets its, uh, its, its weld and it fits perfectly and it has the correct shape. No stress in the, in, in the object, which is creating a very smooth shape, also easy for the painting. Guido Bonandrini represents the owner of the Gamma 20 and often travels to the Netherlands to take a look at how construction is progressing. Ciao Guido. Hey. Hey. Hey Bart, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. This is a special feature. Uh, what the, the, the visibility, the high windows with only two window posts in the front. And it's quite rare to have this view. And right. especially yeah. during night time, when you're cruising during night time, you don't have any problem about the view. That is very important. So this is a yacht that you can cruise 24 hours per day. No stop, no problem. Apart from the focus on their own designs, the team has to be aware of what's happening in the world of superyacht construction. This is Monaco, glamorous home to the world's most beautiful yachts, 
all the industry's big players attend the annual yacht show. Monaco is the place to be for yachting. Everybody flies in, owners fly in, colleague naval architects fly in. So you gotta be there to showcase your latest concepts, your latest pro projects, and to, to just meet everybody. We, we can see products, uh, we can see some, some, some finishes. Um, it's an important event. The event is also the perfect opportunity to show clients how the details suggested in their drawings will look in reality. Bart has asked Guido to join him in Monaco, to show him a teak deck similar to the one planned for the Gamma 20. We need to, yes, to take a lot of attention on this part because in our boat we need to fix about uh, the dengue. Guido is at the show to, uh, to see various teak deck finishes. Uh, he is doubting a little bit between uh, natural teak or the Aztec. We have here the teak decking and nice, nice, good size planking. And we have the, 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 the king plank here. What do you uh, think about yeah, it? Yeah, no, I love it, natural teak. And this one is very well, very well fitted on board. But uh, I want to take care about the environment first. We have to take care, Guido, that the yes. king planks keep the, a nice size, the, the nose of the steps keep the proper thickness because that's the quality you, you appreciate when you see the nose of, 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 of a thick step. Yes. The deck of a ship is of great importance. It needs to endure a party or two, but also has to be able to cope with severe rainstorms, with being flushed with salt water on a regular basis, and withstand temperatures in both the tropics and the Antarctic. In the Netherlands, an environmentally friendly deck has been developed. An alternative for an original teak deck. It's based on, uh, on a composite. And a composite means that we, we uh, use 25 different components in one product. So three of the components are for durability, three are for strength, three are for flexibility and so on. We have to be very honest that the price is approximately the same as a teak deck. In the laboratory, the color, strength and material fusion of every newly made deck are carefully tested. It's also exposed to a variety of weather conditions. So what we also have here in our lab is that we have a unique climate room. The temperature goes down from 80 to minus 25 degrees and back again to 80 degrees in four hours time. So what you have is that you have a high temperature which is like the Bahamas and a low temperature like the Arctic. Uh, you can see how it reacts in the Bahamas or how does it react in the Antarctic. The deck will last with those extreme conditions. The client's demands often push design to the limit. So the craziest thing we ever done was an assignment by a northern shipyard from Spain and he wanted to have the lines, the seams, with real gold and also with Swarovski uh, crystals. So that was uh, a quite an uh, unusual uh, assignment. In China, the star is about to enter its most critical phase. After five long years, she's ready to set sail for the first time. Earing Faber, the naval architect, has arrived for the final tests. Will the yacht be properly balanced? Will the calculations prove correct? Every statistic will be scrutinized by the insurers. A single irregularity could trigger the cancellation of tomorrow's vital sea trial. This is what we've been working for with the, with the whole team for uh, four and a half, five, uh, five years, from the very first sketch on paper until uh, today. So it's, uh, it's exciting and uh, a little bit emotional uh, as, uh, as well. Earing prepares the ship for tomorrow's trial. Temperature measurements are an important factor. Even during the higher frequencies, the cooling system has to make sure temperatures stay at a normal level. We're marking uh, the positions where we want to take temperature measurements uh, during the sea trials. And then tomorrow, uh, Marnix can assist me and he knows where to, where to put, put the laser gun. I have a laser gun with me. It picks up the temperature of the, of the spots which you point on. Oh, gaat prima. Dan heb je wat problemen met de computer. Oké. Okay. Uh, net even de stroom af geweest, dus uh, alles moet er even opnieuw aan. We've been asked by the shipyard to prepare a set of protocols which, which allows us to, to test if the vessel complies to the owner's requirements 
and to class and flag requirements. The class will will check if the vessel complies, uh, but they are, uh, they will ask us to conduct the test. We can maybe speed up the schedule. The shipyard is located in an area which is quite shallow and we need to have enough water depth in order to perform our tests, which is about two and a half hours out, of, out to sea. So in any case, we're sailing five hours, more or less, to go to the trial grounds and come back. So how long sailing? It's almost half, uh, five hours. That's, that's not possible. It's too, it's too far. Well, the, the, the area where we can sail, where it's deep enough for maneuvering and for the, for the speed thrust particularly, um, this area is quite far away. We can say it's about five hours. And well, if you have to go five hours there and five hours back, a large part of the day is consumed just by traveling to a location. And it leaves very little time to do some actual tests. After carefully planning a feasible route on open water, it's time to start the procedure. We always start with uh, measuring the draft of the vessel. Earring conducts a calculation so crucial, it has to be checked by hand and computer. He has to know exactly how the yacht sits in the water. The volume of liquid displaced by launching the ship is equivalent to the weight of the vessel. So uh, we go out, uh, take a small vessel, and we go measure the distance from the draft marks to the water lines. <laughs> the worst thing that can happen. Well, there's a lot of worst things which can, uh, can happen. I would say uh, quite important is the, is the crash stop, maneuvering, uh, and, and, and the speed is very important for the owner, that the boat runs on the speed we've, uh, we've designed her in. I mean, we've designed her in the computer, we've designed her in the tank test, but now she really has to perform uh, according to the design. All eyes are on the trial. Its results will determine whether five years' work have been wasted or worthwhile. So you can definitely see that, uh, that the temperature is rising. Earring is busy preparing when disaster strikes. The cooling system's temperature control starts to fail. The star is in mortal danger of losing power. There is no problem, but there is much cool water for the starboard uh, engine wasn't firing up, so uh, uh, we had problems with the cooling system uh, of that, which needed to be uh, to be found out. But the first thing you see is that the starboard engine isn't working, and everybody's thinking, why is this starboard engine not working? It was working yesterday, and why not today? Now uh, everybody is uh, is here. Coming up, things start to heat up even more as the star reaches open water. Have you seen the smoke? What the heck is that? I don't know. It's uh, some kind of exhaust. Super Yacht Star is about to set sail on her first sea trial. But before her very first voyage can begin, the cooling system starts to fail. If the team cannot rectify the problem, the engine will hit maximum pressure levels, triggering a fire or an explosion. Well, we're now checking the starboard generator to, uh, to see if the cooling problem uh, doesn't exist over there. But uh, as far as we can, uh, can check now with the visually and uh, with the gauges, the, the, the cooling temperature of the, of the generator is fine, so uh, that one is green and cleared off for sailing. A crisis in the engine room has caused a three-hour delay. At long last, the yacht is ready for departure, but not before it's been given a traditional Chinese blessing to appease the gods. We've uh, yesterday got a lot of emails and calls from the guys in the office already. I mean, we worked on it with the whole of office nearly for, uh, for nearly five years, so everybody wants to know how it's going. The star sets sail for open water. It's here that the real tests will begin. A single incorrect calculation could endanger the vessel. It's moving. Huh? It's moving. Good job. Good job, guys. See you in about 16 hours. <laughs> No, 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 no. we're uh, still revving up. We're at 1500 RPMs. You can see on the screens up there. And once we're 1800, this is the maximum RPM we can do. So then uh, I want to see how it does for about 10 minutes. And if everything seems okay, we can initiate uh, the uh, endurance trial. 
Dus, heb je gezien de smoke? What the heck is that? It's uh, some kind of exhaust. And there's more trouble. The yacht appears to be unbalanced, causing the anchor to hit the prow. Now, Jen, now pumping up the ballast. So this in the ballast. Okay. Yeah. So we should come up more yeah, with more, the nose. More, more. Okay, good enough. Uh, we have the idea, that, uh, the feeling that the boat is trimmed a little bit forward at the moment. As a result, and we might get a little bit more spray uh, on the bow. Uh, but uh, I think in general it can be uh, it's normal that we have more water on the bow. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think it's just being out at sea the first time and, and not having the need yet uh, to, to fix the anchor properly. Uh, so these are the small things you will encounter, uh, I think, in a first uh, test out on sea. Okay, now it's okay. Yeah. The smoke on the deck appears to be caused by the imbalance of the ship. The yacht encountered more resistance from the water than usual, so the engines had to work harder and overheated. After accurately balancing the ship, all smoke disappeared. But that doesn't mean the team can relax. Every 15 minutes, Marnix pays an anxious visit to the engine room, fearing a meltdown of the cooling system. Everything is going actually extremely well. All the tests are running quite uh, quite smoothly. I mean, it will be long days. We need to perform a lot of tests, but it's uh, the boat is handling very, very well. Uh, most of our clients uh, have a very uh, specific requirements regarding the, the sound levels on board. So we go uh, to each space and, and then with our decibel reader, and we measure uh, the decibels in each space to reflect them against the contract values. Star's fortunes look to be on the rise, but the progress of another superyacht is still in question. Owner's representative Guido returns to the Netherlands to check on the Gamma 20. Vital decisions have to be made regarding the interior. What I'm paying attention for is, is to make sure that the value of the boat is also fitting the interior. Um, if a client wants marble, the first thing I need to do is check with the naval architects if the weight isn't comparison with uh, the things which are calculated for. Um, and afterwards, we can pick the nicest materials we can find, of course. The strangest demand I ever had, well, um, I've, I've been asked to, to fit tiger eye uh, into wall tiles. Um, and in the end, it was too expensive to fit a whole bathroom into tiger eye uh, uh, stones. Yeah, that was my, well, most crazy experience to find that out, yeah. Today we have a lot of discussion, we have a really long meeting because we need to discuss about the future details about the interior, delivering time, and we need to discuss also about this. What's good to know, Guido, is that you see the overall is, is quite oaky around here. We're going to, uh, to adjust some of the, of the woodworks uh -huh. into um, a stain, which makes it a bit darker, a bit more Bengay look. Uh -huh. And also the curtains are going to be uh, in a dark brown. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be a butterfly. So, so we have a contract. A yeah, contract. exactly, exactly. Good to know is that these walls are going to be upholstered as well, and that's going to be upholstered in this fabric. So very nice, and yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. So all the wall panels which are going to be here are going to be upholstered in this uh, in this nice fabric, also technical fabric. So we don't have problem for maintenance. No, no, okay. not at all. You can see that it yes. shimmers a little bit. Yes. So that's, I think, a very nice uh, detail. And also here, in between, we're going to have the stainless steel strips, just like as the... that one? Yeah, yeah. So we are paneling or just this part? Yeah, yeah. We're doing a little bit of foam, of course, in between it. So it's Once. also easy to, to bump against it and you won't harm yourself. The Maria Esther has just been launched and earring services as naval architect are urgently required. He not only has to check the yacht's balance, he has to measure precisely how low it lies in the water. The center of gravity of the boat basically determines uh, how stable the boat uh, actually is. Uh, and there are uh, all kinds of uh, requirements uh, put to the boat, both by the owner but also by uh, regulatory bodies. And we have to fulfill these requirements. And uh, for that reason, we need a certain uh, position of the center of gravity. In this case, we're in, uh, in inland waters. Now, obviously, when you're in a seaport, uh, the density is higher, uh, and this uh, basically uh, has an influence on, on the weight determination of the boat. 
Sometimes, remarkably old-fashioned methods are used to test a cutting-edge vessel. Well, the angles uh, during the test we, we uh, derive in two ways. First is the, the traditional way by putting a pendulum uh, on, a, on a swing inside the vessel, uh, which is dampened a little bit in a bucket of water. Basically, we measure uh, the deflection of the, of the pendulum to determine the angle of the vessel. And secondly, we use our inclining uh, device, which uh, digitally records the angles of the vessel. So we have also a digital readout of, of what's happening during the test. The computer receives the, uh, the input from the device. It's measuring strings of, uh, of about uh, 30 seconds. And uh, then it compares the values of each string. And when they're close enough together, hey, he has a positive reading about the angle at that moment in time. During the project, hey, we, we do our calculations. Things can be changed, uh, different materials can be used, uh, things can be slightly different in practice than by calculation. So at the end, it's always uh, yeah, challenging to see if uh, the vessel turned out as we, as we anticipated. By moving weights from one side of the ship to the other, Earring can measure the incline of the ship. Together with the weight of the ship, this will determine the GM value, a measurement for the stability. This has to meet the official criteria in order for the ship to be considered safe by the authorities. Well, so far the results look, uh, look pretty good. Uh, we're getting good results on uh, the inclines. The center of gravity that we determined today uh, is very close to what has been uh, determined by calculation. That means that, that she's as, as planned and uh, she performs well. The Maria Esther performed well. But in China, the team is several hours into STAR's first full trial. Only 20% of the tests have been conducted. It's falling well behind schedule. And the 30.2 is under 85 MCR. Right. Today, uh, we had a few, few setbacks in, in what we were able to, uh, to execute. And so, uh, so we definitely need our second day of sea trials uh, to, uh, to conclude uh, all the tests that we want to do. So that is a positive result for the first day. And I think it's a good job for a, a first trial out at sea uh, to perform already like this. After a long and exhausting day, the star finally heads home for the shipyard. More testing still has to be done, but for now, everybody is quite happy with today's results. What? for owner Bart Velema to get better acquainted with his new ship and a great opportunity to see if she can actually live up to what she was built for. Sail the oceans and more in shallow waters at low tide. In China, the team have finally finished all the testing on Super Yacht Star. After five years of construction and two years of engineering, the yacht is unveiled at the Hainan Rendezvous Boat Show, illuminating the reach of the unique Chinese-Dutch collaboration. We got uh, the permission to show the boat on uh, one of the major boat shows in this, uh, in this area. We're very proud. The whole team, everybody's uh, very, very proud. Uh, during the boat show, we've been shooting some, uh, some images and every day uh, emailing them back to the team. Everybody, everybody would like to see the boat. Nobody, unfortunately, can. So, uh, so, but it's very, very proud moments. It's a very good project. But like with all projects, there's no time to linger. While the proud owners enjoy their floating palaces, different adventures need the team's focus. They have to shape new dreams that in a few years from now, will be the next super yachts. <laughs>